I'm Laura Brody. Um, for description purposes, I am a Caucasian middle-aged woman with dark brown hair in front of a very full bookshelf. And welcome, Patricia Fortledge. It's Fortledge or Fortledge? Fortledge. Yes. Fortledge is one of our artists for Opulent Mobility, and I'm so excited to be able to share your work. Thank you so much for having me. I am oh. so honored that my work is being included in the Opulent Mobility exhibition, and I'm just thrilled to be here. It's very cool. Um, Patricia is a photographer, and one of the things that Anthony, my co-curator, and I really loved about your work is that uh, she's done these still lifes, which are quite beautiful, of medicines and elixirs. So one of them is on the menu, which is different medications and medical equipment. And the other one is elixirs. And which, what are those things in the elixirs photograph? Yeah, so the elixirs are actually uh, different beverages for mm -hmm. hydration purposes mm -hmm. for people with disabilities or different chronic illnesses or many reasons that people are told to yeah. hydrate. Nice. Uh, but the thing we loved about it, not just that they were really nicely set up, but it really feels like an old, like old Dutch master with that kind of dark background and the beautiful lighting of these fairly mundane objects that we don't really think of as being stunning. You know. Yeah, so what I was hoping to do with, the, so this project is is all about, well, it's my story, honestly. It, I, I have myasthenia gravis and myalgic encephalomyelitis. And so I, and I have been struggling with this for many, many years, but I've especially been struggling with or against the medical community, it's been a real challenge. And I've learned so much about how the medical community treats women specifically. And so I thought, you know, I really feel a need to share my story in hopes to help other people understand, A, what it's like to have a chronic illness, what it's like to have a chronic illness as a woman, and what it's like as a woman having a chronic illness, dealing with the medical community and, you know, to raise awareness. But for these particular images, what I had hoped to show in this grander scheme of things is that chronic illness can happen to anyone. There, there seems to be an assumption out there that you know, you were either this lazy weakling that brought it on yourself or or you got this illness and, and now you're this, you know, downtrodden, weak, help me sort of, you know, soul. And it's really not the case. Chronic disease can happen to anyone. You don't have to be lazy to get a chronic disease. You don't have to be poor. And so that's sort of where these couple of images came in as I wanted to juxtapose the some of the difficulties with the illness, for example, the infusion materials in the on the menu image yeah. with this sort of opulent setting of I could be a super wealthy person living with this disease. And so here I am with, yes, my materials of my infusion materials, but this is what my, you know, this is what my banquet looks like, or yes, I need yeah. hydration, but I may have fancy drinkware and so you know why not spruce it up and make it a little more yummy because trust me you want to make it a little more yummy so yeah. I you know I was it, this was my attempt to show that this can happen to anyone regardless of your status regardless of really anything honestly as our culture we do have a really terrible view about disability and that somehow there seems to be a sense that you deserve it that it or that you brought it on yourself Yes. Or that, oh, I'm so blessed as to not have it. It's like, look, we're all lucky enough to be living. We're all going to age, 
right? And yeah. things are going to start to happen and our bodies aren't going to be quite what they used to be, regardless of you could be the most healthy person in the world. Your body's still going to change as you age and, and maybe you will be fortunate and you'll be of perfect health until that day comes, but likely not likely other things will come into play. And so yeah. it is really unfortunate that there that there is this attitude about disability and i think a lot of it is self-preservation we want to believe that it can't happen to us so we use all of these different mechanisms to sort of pretend that oh yeah no that couldn't happen to me that happened to you because you're not blessed or you or did something whatever it wrong, is or you did right exactly so yeah it's a, it's interesting and even more so for women is what I'm experiencing. Yeah. So it's truly unfortunate. Um, yeah, for women and women identifying, it's just it happens all the time and it's super frustrating. Um it's also it's disability is one of those groups you can enter at any time for whatever reason. And it doesn't really yes that um, it's not something a lot of people think about in that way. Now, while there are certainly degrees of disability you know, sure. um, and degrees of prejudice that happens and discrimination that happens to you if, for being disabled, um, we all do have potential regardless of where we're at. No, I was just going to say, which is which actually works on both sides. There's potential yeah. on on either side, and that's part of why I think this project feels so important to me is yeah. I believe that there's potential in people understanding better as well. And oh, yeah. so if people can start to understand maybe even just a little bit by seeing some of these images that I'm using to tell my story, then maybe they'll be a little more open-minded towards other people that they know, or maybe family members that are suffering. Maybe, you know, they'll, um, be more supportive and so it's kind of meant to sort of raise awareness and and hopefully yeah. help to sort of help people to understand a little better or it is a really good way to open up a lot of conversations that might be really uncomfortable for people to think about uh as what i feel and that's one of the goals of this exhibit and i feel like this is a really great way to do that to talk about these things and there can be a lot of shame attached to medication use, which is unfortunate as well. Like, look, we all need things to get through our day. What called to you with photography, particularly? Yeah, so that's interesting. So I actually worked in corporate America. I had a corporate job for mm -hmm. many years. And it was great in some ways. It was really nice having a regular paycheck and hey, yeah. that stability. But I always found myself, when I had time off, I would always go volunteer overseas. I just found myself hmm. wanting to help, wanting to make a difference or support efforts that I thought were really doing good in the world. And so I would go volunteer overseas, not as a photographer. I always had my camera with me, but I just volunteered as a human, right? But there ended up being times where things needed to be documented. And mm -hmm. because I always had my camera, I was called upon. And this was, you know, this was what, 20 years ago. So this okay. was before everybody was a photographer. <laughs> I was the obvious choice because I had some skill. I had my camera. Mm -hmm. And it just, it happened more and more. And then I was asked, hey, you know, we're heading over to this country or this region next. Can you come with us? Or can you, you know, Need. can you fit that in? And so eventually there was enough of that. And I found it so fulfilling that I just transitioned out of the corporate environment into doing photography as a job it paid well even though these were nonprofits they have budgets and it worked and it worked because they knew that i was there for the cause not because i was there to try to use them as a stepping stone to get yeah. on with national geographic or or what have you and so it yeah it just it worked really well 
And I, I learned a lot about, well, there were a lot of studies that were done that showed that if you invested in women, entire communities would be raised. Mm-hmm. And that just so fit with who I am, what I am all about as a human. I just really believe that there's a lot of work to be done for women and girls because yeah. Let's face it, there there is no equality, right? And and so I guess you would say I'm a subtle activist in that I use my photography to support work that is being done to to make the world better for for women, really. And so yeah, it just all fit really well for me. I got started as a documentary photographer and mm-hmm. did that for like 15 years. And then COVID hit, and then also my health took a turn around yeah. that, you know, well, the health thing started a bit before that, but it really started declining, that my muscles started declining around the same time as COVID. Mm. So I wasn't able to travel overseas as much anymore, or, you know, lug, throw all my gear on my back, yeah. lug it out in the middle of Africa, you know? So I started focusing a little bit more on art and how I could still sort of support raising women through that. And so I, I, you know, I've been doing, even in my art, it's really been focused around, around that. And, Mm -hmm. and then eventually decided my story was something that should be told, which is so strange because I like to be behind the scenes, every, you know, everything, all of the work that I've done, I like being a worker bee. So this is, this is a little odd for me, a little uncomfortable at times, but people seem to be responding to it in a really positive way. So I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now. It does make a difference. So a lot of times it doesn't seem like it should be, but when you make it more personal, you make it a little more universal. You know, you. That is the strangest thing to me. That is, that is the advice that I was given when I first started putting this together and I was sharing all this data and information. I'm very, I'm a data wonk. I live live life through my brain. So I was, you know, I I had all this data about, you know, Uh this many women are impacted by this. And, and, you know, and somebody told me, they said, you know, you're going to reach more people, believe it or not, by telling your story as opposed to everyone's story. So, yeah, so here we are whether I like it or not. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, no, it, it's true, especially if you're used to being background, essentially, um, that to put yourself front and center can feel really uncomfortable. But sometimes it's just what we need is a visual example. And if that helps anyway, that's that's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're being- I mean, that's really the whole point, yeah. right? Of Of all of it. I mean, we can talk and talk and talk and talk about how- difficult it is to have you know this disease or this disability but honestly until you see a picture sometimes that picture can ju- i mean even my yeah. own parents have said is this really that hard for you like do you really feel like this and i'm sitting there going we, we've talked about this for, for <laughs> how long you know what i mean like yes i feel this bad i feel worse than this uh, you know, so it's interesting that a picture yeah. really brings it home. Yeah, and it, it really can. And some of yours are super evocative. It becomes personal. And while it's really super vulnerable to do that, there's something so potent about saying, look at me, this is what's happening. Then I can share with you the statistics. And we can talk about that in a much broader term, just because you've seen something that hits you viscerally. Well, and people have been reaching out to me and saying, cool. oh my gosh, I was just trying to explain this to my husband yesterday. Mm. So thank you. This is so perfect. You've, you've given me the tool yeah. and, you know, and other people have reached out about other things. And, and it's so strange because 
you know, again, this is just my story, right? So I'm just telling it as it's happening or as I'm, you know, remembering different pieces of it. And, you know, sometimes I'll post something that I'll think, wow, this is just, it's so odd. And, and I doubt if anybody's going to get this at all. And then that'll be the thing that blows up, right? That everybody's like, oh my gosh, that pill shrine, the the supplements that I've spent money on, you know, whatever. And, and you'll oh, yeah. think, you'll think, that was the least artistic of <laughs> anything I've done, you know, like. Oh, there, there's I, a saying, there's a saying from Martha Graham about that, that somebody that she had known was putting up work that didn't, got really good claim and the person did not feel like it was their best work. And Martha Graham's like, it's, it's our responsibility to be a vessel through which this work comes. And it's not our responsibility to judge it or even to like it or even to believe it ourselves. It's our job to make it. And that's the way we communicate with the world. Yeah. Yeah. It calls to you, right? It just says you are the vessel through which it comes. So. It's so, this is so different from my documentary work though. Yeah. I mean, it's still, this is very documentary in many regards, but then also conceptual. I, I have an odd sense of humor. And so I like to sort of, you know, insert bits of, bits of humor here and there. Like, like I did the piece about women are always being told, it's all in your head, it's all in your head. And so I did this piece where I used a special lens and stuck my face so close to the lens that it looks like my head is huge. And then my teeny <laughs> tiny little feet are down here, you know, and, and I'm, I think I'm blowing my cheeks, like, you know, sort of making fun of them. Oh, really? It's all in my head. Well, here you go. You know, kind of, so I, I do sort of insert some humor. So there is, you know, some artistic license we'll say uh, happening here. But a lot of it still is very documentary oriented. However, when it's my story and it's my art and that then that's it, I'm not working for someone else. Yeah. It's sort of it's very liberating in a lot of in a lot of ways. But it's also very odd because when I'm working in a documentary capacity for an organization or for someone else, I want to make sure that I'm doing the very best work possible. So that flows into this sometimes. And yeah. sometimes it's a struggle because I think, oh, that doesn't look, oh, I should reshoot that. That's not quite, you mm -hmm. know, but, mm -hmm. but it is what it is, you know? Mm. So it's an, it's an odd thing sometimes to say, well, okay, I'm just going to put this out. It's not what I would consider my best work, but who knows? And then sure enough, that will resonate so well with people that, well, yeah. there you go, you know? And then something that I think, oh, oh, I love how that turned out. And I'm so proud of my lighting on that or whatever. And then people are like, meh. Crickets. <laughs> yeah. you're like, this is okay. Well, I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes that's that's all you have. Yeah, it's exactly. really hard to tell with any of your work. No, but and at I'm the glad. end of the day, the story is what the story is, right? Yeah. So you just roll with it. And yeah, I'm so glad that it's actually resonating with people and that you're getting a great response. I mean, it's I feel like it's gorgeous and so evocative. And apparently, I'm not the only one. So that's good. Thank you. Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was only through social media that I first knew of your work. And it was probably through other Los Angeles artists. But then you put in work in the goddesses, the Enter the Goddesses show that I did over at the Makery. And it was, I saw your stuff. Mike, please join us. <laughs> and that, oh my gosh. Yeah, I I was so excited when I met you and you told me about opulent mobility and I was excited about the work you're doing. Just Thank this you. whole opulent mobility concept. And I mean, that was super exciting and inspiring. And then to be sort of included 
in this exhibition I was just beyond myself to be honest <laughs> so no, it's really cool I'm so you. glad you could and gorgeous work 